Salam Nerds is brought to you by HalalShirts.com, where you can find fun novelty gifts for your Muslim friends. While you're at it, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Yo, 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 Salam Nerds! It's your boy Neves, a.k.a. Watch with Neves, and I'm here with my co-host Jazz, a.k.a. Jazzraphone. Jazzraphone. <laughs> okay, okay. Is it because you have a new microphone? Yes, yes. I have a new Finally! microphone. So for those you don't, don't know... <laughs> <laughs> so I got a cheap Craigslist $50 microphone, which wasn't a bad microphone, but it wasn't a professional one because I didn't really have a lot of faith in our podcast. I did not know we would go past 50 episodes. We are at like 57 episodes mm-hmm. now, which I is think wild. This is 58, to right? Um, this should be a 58. This might yeah, be 58. So. This is our 58th mm-hmm. episode. So I was like, you know what? L- let's splurge. Let's uh, let's get a nicer microphone and a little bit of a nicer setup. So we're moving up in the world, man. We're getting hey. up there. <laughs> Speaking oh, of man. moving up, but listen, uh, we, who's our guest, man? Yeah, it's, let's talk about our guest. So this is somebody you might have seen in almost every single one of our episodes. You just didn't know it. There is a poster that I have in my background that says Zindan on it. Um, and I have it in every single of my TikToks. I have it in uh, like three places in my bedroom. I have all the comics. I never got a free comic. I paid for every single one. Even when they offer me free comics, I went ahead and paid for it because I believe in supporting mm-hmm. brown artists. And this guy uh, is one of the best. He is someone who's been putting in work. He's at every single New York Comic Con. They have the most extravagant setup. It's awesome. Welcome, Omar. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that introduction, <laughs> and thank you for that years of support. I honestly, I honestly appreciate it. I think I'm gonna get you something for free, so I'm not gonna let that go. No, 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 no. no. I don't want anything. We for buy me. things at retail price for our friends. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not true. You you did give me the posters okay. for free, but the comics I all okay. paid for. The comics I paid for. Good, good. Uh, but yeah, 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 no, man, it's cool. I, I love your comics. Uh, tell people a little bit about what your comics are. Bro. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, thank you guys for having me uh, again for the second time, although I didn't show up for the first one, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, you stood know, us I up, did, man. You I stood did. us up. You had a good you. excuse. It's fine. It's goes. fine. It, it, it reminds me of prom. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me at prom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, we, we might need to go into some therapy for that. But no, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've been doing uh, action fantasy series called Zendan, which, uh, you know, you guys have so kindly been repping and supporting. Um, it started uh, actually right when Miss Marvel came out, like about the same time we both kind of dropped. Obviously, uh, Miss Marvel, a massive success and a huge, you know, uh, move forward for us. And, and at that time, I was feeling much the same feelings that I think the, the creators of Miss Marvel were feeling, which was, you know, there's a, a real lack of representation from, from our neck of the woods. And so I said, uh, what better time than to try to do this? And so uh, uh, me and, and Quorum, which you guys know, or who you know really well, um, uh, uh, put together this book, Zindan, and it's an action fantasy series based in the Mughal Empire. Um, and, and it's... Um, sort of a, 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 a opportunity for us to really showcase our neck of the woods, like our part of the mm-hmm. world. Um, something that's not very American centric, not a very Euro centric, but kind of goes back to a time where, you know, you could say like our, our sort of like Renaissance period for, for like, you know, Muslim empires. And so for me, that was something um, that I started with. And then, you know, naturally, I, as I started working on comics, I kind of got the bug and I've been, you know, launching a couple other series since then. Uh, you guys probably are familiar with the, the one that's maybe the most successful so far, which is the Incapable Trump <laughs> satire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, you know, that. And then uh, uh, more recently, I've gotten into sort of like medical graphic medicine books, which are which are like medical oh. education. Oh, wow. In that, comics. And so I that's, didn't know about that's, that's Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've been doing the last year. So um, definitely a lot to talk about. But uh, yeah, excited to be here. Cool. Wow, that's awesome. So, Jeff, let me tell you about this incapable Trump. I know. Thing, I, 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 Basically, I have. yo. Yo, no. But no, you have them. But you have not seen the line that sh- like, that's at Comic-Con. Like, it rounds the <laughs> block. They have to, like, bring in security because the line for this comic is so long. It. Other people get annoyed. Other booths are like, all the, we, like people can't see our booth because the line for this one is so long. It's so huge. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> 
It's so funny. It's so funny. Like, oh, man. And I, I definitely wanted one of those, but I, I could not wait in that line. That line was too much for me. And I didn't want to, like, pull, like, hey, I know the guy and, like, cheat and get into the front. And I, I didn't want to be that guy. And, like, also, you know me. When I go to Comic-Con, I have to go yeah. to all the panels, so I could not wait in those lines. But, man, I was so proud of you guys. You, you guys definitely do us proud. It's really, really cool. And I will support from day one all the way to day infinity. Oh, for sure. Day yeah, I die. Like- Hundred percent. This is one of my favorite comic series. I mean, Incapable Trump too, but like Zindan. I mean, I have these are like I believe <laughs> issues zero and one, yeah. and then yeah. two and something. Uh, yeah. I'm missing one because you're always sold out for some reason. Hey, Please you know what? Stock my guy. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. Don't worry. Send me your address. I'll mail you them. I'm buying um, it. I don't but, care what you say. Yeah, and <laughs> don't worry about it. You can buy them later. And I see. <laughs> I saw something about you have them now on Kindle or something yeah, now, or they're digital yeah, so, also now? You know, the, the way that book started out was um, it was really like, you know, 2000, what, 16 hit, I think, was when Trump came into office. And I was just, I, as I think many of us were very frustrated and confused. And, you know, that day we were all shocked. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, um, uh, you know, what do I do? And as a joke, you know, I made that first, that issue one cover, you know, the in- incapable Trump. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. thought it would be a cool protest poster. Um, and then from there, you know, everybody's like, oh, I'll buy that comic. And I was like, I didn't write a comic about this. I just made a poster. <laughs> you know? uh, and so then I was like, oh, crap, I better do this. And, and so I cranked out a comic. And, and, and each time uh, we made the comics, it was really important for us to make sure that these were, at that time, really just like protest pieces. So we didn't want to sell them. And, and as you guys know, that kind of yeah. built this sort of like mythology behind this book and created a lot of like the the um uh excitement and so we gave out 200 copies and that's it limited print run no variants none of that nonsense of reprints <laughs> like just straight 200 yeah, yeah collectors and we gave them all out and so unfortunately a lot of people missed and they're worth a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're worth a lot <laughs> the now. eBay resale prices let's, are actually let's check insane. right now let's check right now insane the incapable um, Trump. Last time I checked, I think I saw something around like 600 or 700. I don't know, but that was Holy crazy. crap. And that was like when it first came out. Um, <laughs> Incapable Trump number two, 2017, rated 9.8, $1,650. Damn. <laughs> so how, how does this work? Can you just like make your own and then just like, put money? <laughs> like, just keep printing more. How does it work? You know, it's- that's it's just funny. wild. I'd say that my wife is always like, I'm going to just like print more and, and sell them on eBay and make money. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, no. You know, we're, yeah. we're collectors at heart, right? You know? And I, I don't know if you guys follow like the comics drama, but there's a big um, drama now at like uh, that just happened at uh, C2E2 where like one of these publishers uh, created a variant, an unlicensed variant of, a, <gasps> of the first appearance of Miles Morales, right? Oh, no. And basically... Mm printed them and like sold them to it, comic influencers and like created a whole bunch of uh, like drama behind it. And so one of the complaints was like, these guys just keep printing this stuff and they give it to their friends. And so for us, it was very important that like we created that line, you know, which was a pain in the butt, but it was yeah. great for those collectors. And so, you know, we've always promised we're not going to reprint our, you know, create variants and stuff to like water down the collectability of the, the issues that you got. Yeah, yeah. So, you get it, you get it, and and I think that's what creates like the the amazing resale value. But to answer your question about the Kindle that's thing, uh, a lot of people missed out on the book, you know, and, and they were like, I just want to read it. I don't necessarily want to like collect it. So then we mm. we basically yeah, kind yeah. of reissued or bound the entire thing into hardcover, which is both available on Amazon and in Kindle. So if you want to read it as like a trade, you can get it. Um, but you know, the single issue, the floppies with the covers, which are not in the the trade are one one and done yeah, yeah. Oh, get it, got it. oh my god i just found yeah so i have actually i found the first one on actually eBay. Have it. it's two thousand six hundred fifty dollars <laughs> wow that is cool man congratulations <laughs> mashallah so mashallah oh brother that is awesome it's 3500 if you want to get both of them <laughs> that's yeah, crazy no it's nuts I, I totally did not no. expect that you know i remember the first day we put those out like um i had to uh, just by chance, you know, you can put freebies on on the like um, app for New York Comic Con. So like people who are scrolling through are like, oh, these are gonna be all the freebies that you get at different booths. And so this this was one yeah. of those things that I just kind of l- uploaded and thought, okay, nobody's gonna look at this. And I kid you not, like 9 a.m. the you know the con opens to the people with like the premium passes, 
and there's like six or seven people in my booth and we hadn't even unpacked you know we came in dst <laughs> so like all our stuff still like you know rolling in slowly and everybody's like where's the incapable trump and i'm like yo i haven't even opened the boxes yet <laughs> and there's like That's six so or seven funny. people like already and then i was like okay this is legit mm-hmm. and i checked the next morning after we given out the first 50 and they were already all up on ebay like five six hundred bucks a pop and i was like wow okay we're on to something and it's been magic since. I mean, it's been really exciting. Yeah, I found issue number three for a thousand. That's cool, so. man. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> all right, we'll be here all day talking about this issue, but let, let's get to what we're really <laughs> yes. here for. And that's for the new movie, Prey, which is a Predator prequel. And this movie blew me away. I, first of all, I didn't even know this was a Predator movie. Uh, like, I was like, oh, cool. Like, there, I saw this indigenous girl. I saw the green paint, but you don't really notice the detail of like three dots in her eyes, which is like the reference to Predator. I did not know this was a Predator movie until like people started TikToking about it. Cause I'm like, if it's a Predator movie, it's going to be in theaters. It's not going to go straight to Hulu. Like, what kind of Predator movie would go straight to Hulu? Um, but this did. And honestly, I, you actually messaged me while I was about <laughs> to put it on. And it's so funny. I was like, that's so weird. That's why I was like, I got to have you on the podcast. That's like serendipitous. Well, um, mm-hmm. Overall, like, I don't know what to go about this, like, uh, show uh, movie because it was so incredible and blew away all my expectations. Um, Omar, tell us, tell us what yeah, you think, Yeah, well, well think it's interesting the, you uh, said that, overall. like, you didn't know it was a Predator movie. Uh, if and, and are we going full spoilers here or not? We can, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, we're okay, going full right, spoilers. Right, full so spoilers. everybody who's watching, if you haven't seen this now, don't want spoilers. Turn this podcast <laughs> off right now. <laughs> this is your yes. warning. Your okay, only warning. Your chance to go. <laughs> yes. Only warning. Like, like, like the episode, but then come back <laughs> exactly. after you watch it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, it's funny because, like, you know, uh, Dan Trachtenberg, who's the director, he, in some of his yeah. interviews, he was like, he didn't want to tell people this was a Predator movie at all till you watched it. So imagine going to the theater and thinking like, oh, we're watching some like indigenous yeah. movie. And then all of a sudden a predator shows up in the movie. And you're like, wait, what? This is a predator movie? Oh, so it was, by, was, des- he, it was by design. His, his oh. plan was not to tell anybody. Even in the trailer, he didn't want the three lasers. He wanted it to look like it was completely like a regular movie that had nothing to do with predators. Yeah. Obviously, I think the studio was like, wait a minute. We're not going to like blow the opportunity to, to like advertise our franchise. You know what I mean? Like, so... And that's why the, the 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 title has nothing to do with Predator in it. It's called Prey. So, yeah. uh, and yeah, even yeah. the trailer looks kind of you're not sure until like they kind of obviously give it away. But he in a lot of his interviews he was like saying that his original plan was to just not tell anybody this was a Predator movie. So you like go to the movie thinking you're gonna watch some like indigenous you know film and Man. about hunting and a girl like kind of yeah. move on ish and then all of a sudden the Predator <laughs> shows up in the movie and you're like wait what? Oh, so. Man, th- social media has ruined us because nothing can be kept secret. We can't keep the Spider Man secret. We can't yeah. keep anything yeah. secret. It's, no, it's, I, I would have uh, been blown uh, away. I mean, I would have watched it even if I didn't know it was a Predator movie. But once I knew it was a Predator movie, I was like, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah. uh, I think the trailer dropped in like early summer. Uh, I had heard whispers like there was there was a new Predator movie coming out, but I was like, okay, let me just see if there's a trailer for it. And I think it was right around maybe one of the early. Uh, Comic Con said that they'd, they'd like premiered the um, trailer, and I saw it and I was like, "Yo, this is dope!" Because immediately, if you look at the trailer, you get vibes of the original, which is kind of this like man versus beast, you know, or woman versus beast kind of vibe. And 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 all the right. movies after that kind of lost that initial magic, which was just really pitting like one person against one predator, right? And and it's really right. like a battle of you know, obviously not strength because there's no way that you're going to win that no. even with Arnold. Right. But <laughs> it's really about like the human spirit yeah. and, and the wit and stuff. And so seeing that in, in sort of teased in the trailer, you're like, okay, this is going to be good. Cause they're going back to what like was the magic of the first movie. And, yeah. and, and I mean, that's exactly the way I felt about the movie. I, I was in love. I loved it. I thought it was really good. I think it's really cool. Cause like one of the things that makes people, uh, you know, like really enjoy the movie it's not the fact that like a person is strong enough to take on the predator but there were remorse uh, not 
resourceful yeah. to yeah, take yeah. on the predator, right? That's what they use, and that's like that's the classic. That's what happened in Arnold Schwarzenegger's entire team got destroyed, and the reason he made it is because he was able to use resources and put mud on himself and figure out, you know, how to outsmart yeah. this creature. Um, and that's what happens in this movie. And I thought that was really. I cool. mean, Jazz, you what about it, you? man. Like the fact that she was able to use a flower to like hide her body temperature, and like using her the aliens like or the predators like laser tracking with the like uh essentially silver bullets to kill him like this is straight up genius like she learned this creature inside and out and figured out what its weaknesses were and then used other resources that we would never even think about like there's no way i would ever think like oh my god that flower is the reason that they couldn't see him initially like when in the beginning of the movie when she had the flower to i believe it was her brother who got injured right and then he survived no, uh, no, it was like right. a, a random person, but her yeah, and her brother right. went so that out person to find who him. had the flower survived because of this. I didn't make that connection initially, but when I went back and saw, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, they did this yeah. movie really well. Yeah, they did. They did. You know, did anybody yes, watch the convention? I want, that's what I want to time. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch that. Uh, how, how was it, Jazz? I, I need subtitles. I'll tell you that much, but. I, I don't know if they did a good job or not. <laughs> I, quite frankly, I don't know the language. But uh, if it is true to the Comanche language, then yes, they did it really well. So basically what they said is with the Comanche dub is not them speaking English and then dubbing right. uh, Comanche over it. Mm -hmm. They actually spoke in Comanche and then they dubbed it in Comanche to make it better either for pronunciations or whatever but it's not like you're not it's not gonna be like one of those godzilla movies where they're moving their right, legs right. and they're yeah. saying something differently it's actually going to it, it kind yeah, of matches well yeah cool. i mean if you watch yeah yeah if you watch the interviews uh with the with the director like the intention for this movie was actually to be originally in command mm -hmm. like there was no plan for an english version good and i think after they, they mm. tested with um the studio they decided like it would work better a little bit or at least maybe more accessible to some audiences if they did it in english so that way we understand the english parts and you know when they bring the french in right the french trappers mm -hmm. and none of that's actually yeah. even subtitled in english uh and you're supposed to yeah. not understand what they're saying mm -hmm. because it gives you the experience from uh naru's perspective right where she's like i don't know what they're saying so they yeah. really wanted you to kind of like oh. get into her character and so they felt like if it was comanche then we'd kind of feel distance from her because of the language barrier and then you know it just kind of would lose the vibe so so they made it english so that we could understand her but then feel lost when like the other characters are speaking mm -hmm. as obviously it's brilliant no, no yeah yeah i was i was wondering why that was i thought something was wrong no, with no. The title. <laughs> I, I paused it to yeah, check the they settings did that, they did that intentionally because they wanted you to feel what she would have felt if like there's these foreigners coming invading your land and you you don't know what they're saying right like you that kind of feeling of lost mm -hmm. being yeah. lost and confused and trying to make sense so i mean i thought they they did a real it was like genius the way that they did this film there's a lot of really nice things like you talked about the flower right and the flower is actually a really cool kind of like nod but also original sort of uh uh thing in this movie compared to the original you know when um there's a scene where she falls in the mud in this yeah. movie and it's kind of like immediately like, Oh, right. she figured out to cloak herself with the mud. And then like two seconds later it cuts and she's washing it off. And you're like, no, oh, you're going to get seen by the predator. Yeah. And so yeah. like, you know, it's like a tease to, to say, okay, she's not going to just like basically repeat what Arnold did. But in this case, like since it's 300 years yep. before, you know, she's not going to like invent what Arnold did. So they changed it up so that it was a little bit fresh, right? So she wouldn't beat him in the exact same way yeah, that she yeah. beat him in the first mm -hmm. movie, you know? I thought she also had um, to die in the mud. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. Like, she was, like, yeah. like she right was really here with mud. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was, you know what? It reminded me of the never-ending story. Has anyone seen that? Where, like, the the horse uh, gets Quick stuck sand. in the quicksand. Yeah. Has anyone seen that? Yeah. I was yeah. like, no. <laughs> But but speaking of the the quicksand, what what I like about this movie is they show like the human character and the difference between the predator because the human character learns from their mistakes, right? Like when she's hunting rabbits, she's like losing because like she has to go and grab her axe, so she mm -hmm. creates a rope around her axe to make it faster. And you see like she she comes to a problem and then she solves it. Same thing with the quicksand. Same thing with the 
the, the flower body yeah. temperature and and how to sh- and the flower and like uh, the aiming of the stuff like she learns she's very she's like intuitive and observant right and that's what makes her the better predator hunter, yeah. uh, you know and yeah. not the prey yeah. who's the prey who's and the, the hunter exactly <laughs> um yeah. I, that's cool i had to say it we you all were thinking exactly. it i had to say um, it yeah. <laughs> yeah you know it's interesting like it's really yeah, cool no no you go first man go ahead yeah, I mean, it was interesting, like, uh, when this trailer came out, and even after, like, there was a lot of um, people who watched the film, they're always like, oh, how's this girl going to beat a predator, right? <laughs> and, you know, like, the, there's a lot of, like, you know, there's, like, oh, oh this anti-woke, you know, um, troll sort of army that was really out against this film. And, and I think the reason they misunderstood this film or maybe just missed the point was that it's ne- it was never about her being strong physically to beat the predator. Because even Arnold, in his, like, massive form at that time did not beat the predator with his oh, yeah. strength right. right and so like it's not like we're yeah. saying oh she's gonna beat him because she's strong like that's not the point you know but she did exactly what you're saying which is she learned she observed and she used um the sort of uh experiences that she had to help mm-hmm. the you know develop like a, a technique or a plan to beat the predator and i think that's the thing like you don't need to be yeah Arnold Schwarzenegger. And in fact, Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't beat the predator being Arnold Schwarzenegger. He beat the predator being smarter. Right. Smarter than a beaver. Correct. <laughs> I, <laughs> nah. Although then there's people who are like, well, how are you no, going to but... be smarter than an alien technology that like has spaceships and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, shut up. We're watching a film about a predator. Like you have to suspend disbelief. Yeah. yeah. Well, even then you have to know like this predator is like the first yes. one that's ever been on Earth. So his technology is not even it's right it's 300 yeah. years ones, right in the past. it's uh this is the year, you, like it, yeah. 1720 or something right yeah yeah and the thing i think that makes our species so uh great it's like basically darwinism right you have to adapt right and that's yeah. what she was doing she was adapting she was adapting and that's what let her survive and that's how we've survived on this planet so <laughs> it's one of the reasons like hey we deserve to be here this is why we survived on this planet i don't even know if predator has a planet does he have a i haven't planet? seen the full <laughs> series i don't know maybe if they adapted I mean, better they would have yeah, i haven't seen the full series <laughs> so i don't know <laughs> I don't. So I. I think there's like there's Predator One, Predator Two, uh, and I think there's like two Alien versus Predators, and I don't think they're canon. People have told me they're not canon, so I don't know. If yeah, that really I counts. think just because the films tank. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, if they'd done really well, yeah, like they would have said, "Oh, this is canon, right?" But I mean, obviously, <laughs> nobody really liked those films. Although, I mean, they were fun. I enjoyed them yeah. when I watched them. But thinking back to it, it, it was not on this level. Like this film really captured, I think, the essence of of the like point of this whole film mm-hmm. right i mean it was beautiful i, I mean yeah. let's talk about like this the cinematography it was beautiful oh, the cinematography man. it was gorgeous that was that was the part where i was like yeah this needed to be seen in a theater like you told me you were like hey watch this on the biggest screen <laughs> yeah you can. i, I like, missed oh. that the first time around the second time then, i watched and, it on my tv i'm like oh yeah, yeah i missed this <laughs> definitely watch it no don't, don't watch this on your mm-hmm. laptop don't watch it on your phone yeah. like yeah it needs to be experienced it's it's really really yeah it was is is, i mean the sets were gorgeous unfortunately i had to have it on like really silent because the the baby Uh but i heard the music was really good so i'm gonna go back and put the headphones on and and watch it now like full on um because i was basically watching it like so soft that i was only really reading the subtitles and and like barely hearing yeah but everybody kept saying oh the music the music was incredible so um i missed out on that yeah i i no, I really love the scene where like they hide in the fields from the predator, and like I was like my the Bollywood in me was like, oh, I think I just see some BLJ. Like what's the going on here? Field, <laughs> yeah. Dance number right about to happen. <laughs> yeah, and the predator just guts you. No, <laughs> <laughs> the predator comes out in leather jacket <laughs> with a banjo. Yeah, oh, but that scene was cool too. Because like a, girl, oh, yeah. Naru, she was but, like, oh no, we don't have him. He has us. And then like she saves him. I was like, oh my god. That was dope. Yeah. She was, that was always, a great line. Yeah, there's so like many good line. lines that she had. And, and her character was so awesome. I really loved her her brother too, Tabe. Tabe was mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, he was really good. Like he held his own and I, I, I really enjoy that. But like it, I'm really glad that she got to be the hero because it is very much a David versus yeah. Goliath kind of story, right? And the fact that they have a girl do it make gives it that much more of an interesting story. So I really yeah. enjoy that. Yeah. No, I, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. And and just like there's also so many like layers of commentary because you know they 
they talk about how the indigenous people really got wiped out by these invaders right and in the in the movie you see like the contrast yeah. between sort of like the french as you know who are basically just as alien to the natives as as the you know mm -hmm. predator is right and so predator. And in yeah. many ways, like more uh, ruthless and, and gruesome, because like you know that scene where she walks out and sees like all the buffalo. Yeah, like, they killed slaughter. all of them. I was like, yeah, and, oh, yeah, and, wow. and that that was like the reality, right? Like when when the French and most of the Europeans came to to the Americas, they like just basically just slaughtered everything in sight, and and so you kind of see that, and there, there's like a really deep commentary there about like, you know. The predator is really the beast or monster, but really is is he like at least he has some level of honor. Like he doesn't kill things that are are not like a threat and indiscriminately just destroy mm -hmm. things. Yeah, and and then here you have like the French just come in and like slaughtering the buffalo in mass. And so it was interesting. I think it was like yeah. I definitely think it was like an intentional. Oh, it's definitely sort of juxtaposition <laughs> of like the French and the predator and both like invading yeah. or coming to the land at the same time. And her basically seeing them all as the same sort of alien uh, foreign invaders and treating them like the same. So I thought that was really, really awesome. Really well done. Mm -hmm. And awesome cast, dude. Like, all of them were amazing. Yeah, they nailed the role. The dog, too. The dog was yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I first saw the movie, I had to go and look up, nah. does the dog die? Like, because I cannot handle those movies. <laughs> yeah. You know what's really cool? If you tweet or like uh, talk about the movie and uh, hashtag it, like the actors will actually oh, like snap. reply Yo, I to your comments and stuff. Yeah, like, I had I a few of the actors on yeah. Instagram. Oh. Yeah, I had a few of them. I had a few of them actually comment, and they were like, "Oh, I'm glad you like the movie." And then I looked at them. Like, this guy was in the movie. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, uh, so uh, Dakota Beaver, I think, the brother, is the guy yeah. who plays uh, Tav. Yeah, I was. Brother, I followed yeah. him on Instagram when he had like two thousand followers, and. He was replying to each comment. I was like, bro, you're going to get tired of this real quick when you're you're blowing up. I don't know where he's at right now, but he's probably like a 20, 30, 40,000 followers by now. And uh, I was yeah. I was amazed. He was I individually hope they, responding to everybody. I hope they get more opportunities Definitely. and stuff like that. I want to see more indigenous people on screen and stuff like that. I really tried to get an indigenous person that's on this podcast to join us, but uh, a lot of them couldn't make it, unfortunately. You should do another uh, one. With, oh, like, we want to. Absolutely. I, I, yeah, I, I really want to, but like the representation is so great, and I'm glad like uh, Amber yeah. got her like moment because she was so Amazing. great in Legion. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show Legion. Amazing show. She killed it in that show. Um, fantastic. Uh, so I'm really glad. I hope this opens up. Like, it looks like I mean the, the the responses have been amazing, right? Like this is the number one like film streamed on Hulu, and like. Uh, I mean, the, the social yeah. media response has been mm -hmm. so strong. The Rotten Tomato score is, like, the highest of the whole franchise. So um, I'm certain, like, they're going to greenlight something with them. Like, if not a sequel, at least other movies. I, you know what I think they should do? They should go, like, the Assassin's Creed route and make every new Predator movie set in a different era, right? Like, one could be set in the Mughal Empire era, right? Like, they could be yeah. a Predator in India, or they could be a Predator in Afghanistan during, like, the, the Russian invasion, or there could be one in feudal Japan with samurais. Like, you could have a Predator movie for every era, and it'll be fresh and, like, new. It'll be so cool to see all these cultures in a Predator setting. Like, you can, this could go on forever. This could be a new Bro, franchise. go a step further. Make it period. the Assassin's Creed franchise. Because, honest to God, they're all there. <laughs> they're there throughout all of history. And, like, you could actually have yeah. seen, like, mo certain movies where the like assassins do kill the Predator before major historical events. Like, this could happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could, man. It could. I think that'd be really cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was some of the callbacks to the other Predator movies. Because when you uh, – mm -hmm. you know that gun mm -hmm. where she shoots the Predator? Yep. That gun is from yeah. Predator 2. And I thought that was really cool. And then they also show, like, a burnt cigar. And I think that's, like, a reference <laughs> yeah. to, like, Schwarzenegger uh, from Predator 1. So the callbacks were really cool. And then the line where she goes, like, yeah. if it bleeds, yeah. we can kill it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love I, – yeah. like, even though it's, like, its own thing, it was enough of a uh, callback to make mm -hmm. you really be like that. I think yeah, the true fans will see that. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, this is, a, this is definitely a Predator movie. Yeah, no. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, like – Really, really good, and and I think you know probably partly because everybody's expectations are so <laughs> low. You know, you're like, okay, we've seen five yeah. Predator movies, like you know, 
Yeah, it's another movie to watch like on Sunday night or like Saturday night where nothing's going on. And, yeah, you know, it's cool little TV. You know what's a? But that's yeah. the best, man. When you don't expect, you come in blind. Like I went into everything, everywhere, all at once, blind, <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa, this movie is amazing!" And with like tiktok and social media it's very hard to go into anything blind and not have something spoiled for you it's yeah. really really difficult and this was one of the movies where i was like wow this you know in that, in that sense like you know a lot of people are like well why didn't they do this in theaters and stuff but i think if they had done like the 20 million dollar advertisements and blasting this everywhere then people might you know be a little bit different in the way that they approach this but i think people went in here with like a clean slate and just sort of like all right here's a movie on hulu let's check it out uh, and, and then, like, it yeah. just was amazing. Like, standalone. I'm sure it would have done well with, like, it's the, a theatrical it's the, release, but I think there was something magical about no. just, like, going on Hulu, hitting this, and be like, holy shit, this is good. Yeah. It is the most streamed movie on Hulu, the highest rated Predator movie, and now Disney, with Hulu included, has surpassed yeah. Netflix. Wow. Yep. Like, their stock just went, like, gain. crazy high <laughs> this, uh, this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have like ten shares in you alone. <laughs> no, no. Hey, man, get us, get us a a, a prey no, no. sequel. I'm <laughs> With so my ten down shares. I'm signed up. Yeah, I'm yeah, signed yeah. up for at least three movies. Like, I'll go in three movies at least. Yeah, man. That's what we gotta do, man. Eat, pray, and love. <laughs> the, the next one. <laughs> oh my god, get out! Studio robbers fight the predator. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be wild. <laughs> That'll be the best. But what do you think about uh, what, oh, like, what were your thoughts about the Predator design? A lot of people had mixed feelings. Like some people were like, "I I wanted the original I, Predator," and I, I like, like, "No, this is a cool Predator." No, no, I liked it. I liked it because like Feral Predator, it, mm-hmm. it works really well with the Native Americans. Like it just like goes well together with the two, and I feel like it was very like in yeah. in tone. Uh, with the movie so i like that a lot i didn't want with the laser cannon and like that would have been like too much like like the laser cannon and everything would have been way too much the the hard armor all that stuff would have been too much and like people already find the story like hard to believe just because she's a girl but if predator had all this armor that yeah. would have been like even no, like worse the, for people no i mean the way she go uh got the helmet off i was like oh that's clever but you're right, because like even that's yeah. also almost mm-hmm. not believable because it's like a something to smooth the plot along, right? Like, what are the odds she's gonna hit yeah. that exact angle perfectly? Like, yeah, that? yeah. like you don't really think about that. I, I can yeah. see some people not believing that, so I'm glad they definitely made it just a helmet and not full armor because if they had the full armor, like nobody would believe she was able to knock that off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know yeah. when you look back at it now, like with the lasers and like. I was looking at the original Predator design, and, the, and he had, like, leather gloves. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is, a, this is an alien from, like, another, you know, planet. And, and for some reason, they have leather-designed armor. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, nah. you know? Uh, they just decided they're going to have, like, the same fashion sense as us just a little bit. You know, so I was like, okay, I like that he was more stripped-down reptilian, and, and he looked like, you know, looked like something otherworldly and not just somebody who's, like, you know, cosplaying a monster um like the original predator yeah. was cool amazing design um but when i look back at the armor and stuff some, some of that stuff looks kind of <laughs> now. and so i like this barrel predator it looks scarier it looks like a you know a creature yeah, that's yeah. coming from mm-hmm. the world yeah yeah like yeah. a monster yeah yeah, yeah sure. it's funny i don't know if you guys that ever read no. into like the original predator but the first predator was supposed to be jean-claude van damme actually he was mm-hmm and, yes. Yep. Yeah. He was Jean Claude Van Damme, and yeah. they, they replaced him. And it him, looked yeah. like a giant ant eater. It was like the <laughs> ugliest, dumbest looking. Yeah, look at it. it, was it so I'm gross. sure this picture's floating on YouTube. It's floating onto YouTube as it, well once we post this live. <laughs> yeah, but that's funny. Look, look, look at the original Predator, and it's just like, what? That movie would have not worked with the original Predator looking like Jean Claude. Yeah. It, 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 oh it looked like a Pokemon. Yeah, it was so it was like a pink ant eater. <laughs> what is yeah. this? <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. It's really so bad. So they just like they fired him. He actually filmed scenes in the movie too, because they thought like, all right, we're gonna put this guy who's like karate guy against the, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then John Claude goes on to become like a huge action star, yeah. you know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but it was like so awful. Oh my so, god, this suit. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty bad. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's ugly, right? It's terrible. Like, I can see at the time why they would want to do it. Like, but, like, I would want to kill it just for that. Looking at it now, I'm just like, no way. They, they did not think this through. Yeah, I mean, it's not even right, scary. Right, yeah. Like, like well, I want to be its friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like Barney. <laughs> and like, and this is the challenge of like when you're creating stuff like this that you, you know, creature design is like a whole field in itself. And Stan Winston is like one of the greats, and and they were called in to do this. And you think about it, and you're like, if they hadn't designed the Predator the way that it was, like it wouldn't have the whole movie wouldn't have you know worked. It's it's like it's the credit yeah. to like the the creature designers and the character designers who like created this that made this whole thing work. You know, when you look at the Predator, it's like terrifying with the dreads, mm -hmm. the face mask. And then when you take that off and it's got the mandibles and stuff. Yeah, the like, teeth whoa, like, just, yeah. I was like, really oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, you know? I appreciated it. Yeah. So. No, that's very cool, man. No, man. The, but overall, man, the movie was amazing. I loved it. Everyone should go check it out, watch it, uh, you know, so, and then go follow some of these indigenous actors and stuff like that that are on the show. Uh, support these movies. I I love when, you know, you take a movie that's been done like six, seven times, and then you add indigenous characters in it. It makes it fresh, man. It's a whole new story, and it's like you're seeing it for the first time through different eyes and different perspectives, and it's really, really cool, and I hope we get to see that uh, a lot more. Uh, Omar, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I think, look, the movie? you know, it's, it's cool because um, originally when people saw this, they are like, oh, forced woke diversity and all that stuff, but if you watch this film, mm -hmm. it's good. It's mm -hmm. good for, for many reasons. Like, the cinematography is beautiful. The actors did a great job. And I think they really captured the character so well. Like, if you look at the... If you pull out the Predator and just take him out of this movie, I think it's still actually Yeah, you could put a generic, like, movie with the, another grizzly bear there as something they're hunting. And yeah. it'd still be a great movie. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because she did a great yeah, job as sure. a title character. And it's really about... A, like, I saw this tweet. It's, it, it, it's of course, like a, a story about a girl and yeah. her dog. Right? Like that's that's really the story, and yeah. it's like so nice, and and the surprising amount of like acting that was done just through like expressions, because there's not a ton of dialogue in this movie. Like there's really not a lot of expose. Yeah. It's really her, and just like you know either learning things, observing things, and we would just watch her act through that. So, anyways, I thought it was a fantastic movie. I think it's great that we're getting these actors an opportunity. We should see more of them, and we need to tell the studios. Uh, as we've done with like Miss Marvel, Black Panther, Crazy Rich Asians, that hey, there's an audience for this, mm -hmm. there's a market for this, and if you give people the chance, people will come out and they'll support. And and I think that you know I've been in love with this film. I've been like abusing the replay <laughs> and like button and follow button because I want to get these guys uh, and these girls opportunities, um, and, and I want them uh, to to have great yeah. successful careers. And and, and I mean, for most marketing. of our audience is either. Yeah, That's awesome. girls from the Bachelorette, or you know, guys who are into nerd <laughs> culture. Um, it's up to us to actually retweet, <laughs> like, and share these kinds of things. Because if we don't, the studios won't see this. I mean, we did this whole push on this Marvel. It's not because you know some people accuse me of like you know being paid by them. It's not true at all. Um, I mean, I do own Disney stock, but and I wish I was making a lot of money from it. But that's I not, wish that's not even close to what it is. Um, I did it because like. It's important, and we need to do this because if we don't do it, we're not going to get more of the stuff. Yeah. And quite frankly, I'm enjoying this content. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's no other mode yeah. here. Yeah. Like, it's great stuff. I am too. I, I, I am too. It, it's it's a great feeling to to see a group mm -hmm. that's underrepresented get that moment in the sun. You know, we got to see uh, black people get it with uh, Wakanda and uh, Black Panther, and we got to see. Uh, us get it in Miss Marvel and you know the indigenous community got to see this and hopefully the Latino community is going to go see it in Wakanda forever so hopefully you know everybody when one of us wins we all win that's how it works 100% yeah 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 definitely and I think um, it's cool because um, to, to all the people who are like scared that oh this is just gonna be like woke stuff and diversity shoved down your throat it really isn't honestly it's actually a really tastefully well done movie that just happens to do a great job of representing and i think that uh, uh that's that's the best you know i i understand there's times where like sometimes you just feel like this stuff is getting forced on you uh and, and you might say well you know if it wasn't for all that it's actually a really crappy movie underneath but no this is actually a really really good movie 
Awesome. Well, listen, guys, that's all we have for today's episode. Omar, tell people where they can uh, they find you. They can find you. me on, uh, geez, Instagram and, and Twitter. Uh, you can look me up, Omar F. Mirza. Um, and uh, I'm sure you've probably tweeted me. or Oh, we will for sure do it. Just Google, <laughs> and, and I'm sure you. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us. And until next time, guys, salam, nerds.